Hello everyone. My name is Meghdoot Roy Choudhury. I'm the Director of Global Operations at Techno India Group, an educationist, serial entrepreneur and community builder based in Kolkata, India. That's where I'm speaking to you from. Uh, it's been our absolute pleasure being associated with LP4Y for the last few years. And I figured that I would try and speak to you about the way that education and technology come together, they intermingle and the way that they have done and the way that the trends in the edtech space are also changing and how education and technology together, uh, the powerful combination of the two can be used in order to uplift underserved communities and especially empower the youth in these places. So let me start with a little story. Uh, my father, uh, Professor Gautam Roy Choudhury, who created Techno India Group uh, in 1985, uh, back in the day when technology did not have the same kind of meaning uh, as it does now, uh, did so with uh, the use of uh, computers itself. And he started teaching computers with computers. And at a time when nobody knew what computers were, uh, sitting in his garage in this little town called Hooghly, uh, almost 100 kilometers away from the city of Calcutta, uh, it was a very different time then. Acceptance was a problem, accessibility was just not there. And in spite of all of these hurdles, all of these challenges, he managed to create an institution and a group of institutions uh, uh, henceforth, which helped empower so many people and push them towards technical education uh, in the eastern part of India, wherein most of these kids were leaving the country and going, uh, going abroad, or uh, they were leaving the state of West Bengal and moving towards the south of India to pursue their higher education. So technology has always been used for that purpose except as we know the rate of use of technology has changed and the rate of uh, acceptance of technology has changed with our devices getting smaller and smaller. Uh, I've heard some stories from my father back in the day when uh, one computer that he had uh, been able to buy after accumulating a lot of money from various different places uh, took up a whole room and, in, and punch cards were used which held a few kilobytes of data. Now, uh, if, if you look at all of the computers put together at that time, your mobile phone probably holds more data than that. You have access to a lot more information than that uh, at any given point of time. But the question comes down to, does necessarily uh, accessibility to information equal uh, you know, more information or the fact that we are able to deal with more information? Because most of the times what ends up happening is uh, there's so much information, it gets so hard to sift through and it does not essentially lead to more knowledgeable societies or it does not lead to more informed societies, uh, even though the access to technology is there. So how do we deal with that? Um, back in the day, even if we look at, let's say, uh, you know, a few millennia ago, let's say, uh, you know, even come, come down even uh, further than that, a few centuries ago, uh, the way that access to information was uh, made available was very different. You know, certain people in society had a lot more access to, uh, to information than others, but now times have changed completely, right? I mean, back then you had your uh, your landowners or your kings or your emperors who would be holding on to technology because that was always considered to be what sets apart the well-to-do and not so well-to-do because if you if you have access to information um, then you are somebody who has uh, the higher edge in life but with the age where, which we are in right now technology has become a lot more accessible but again if you, if you look at it in a slightly different way has it though because during the pandemic itself, during the uh, during the COVID-19 pandemic, uh, through our various institutions, schools, colleges, universities, industrial training institutes that are part of Techno India Group, the group that I am part of, we've seen that access to technology works in very different ways. On one side, we have our educational institutions in the cities like Techno India University, like Techno Main Salt Lake, which are rather large institutions, all of them with uh, student strength of more than 5,000 students and very strategically placed in uh, portions of in portions of cities which are very very well connected but uh, we also have these other institutions for example in Jharkhand like in Silli, in Dumka, in Ramgarh uh, which are tiny towns you know away from civilization a lot where uh, the access to internet is not in the same way the bandwidth is not there most of the families barely have uh, you know, maybe one phone, which is, you know, a very early era smartphone and probably a bunch of kids uh, in these in these families who do not have the same kind of access to uh, technology. So what we are looking at as educationists is how do we still 
provide the same kind of services? How do we still provide the same kind of uh, resources to both of them? Because, you know, at the end of the day, 10 hands, right? And all of these, all of these fingers are your fingers. So if you have 10 different institutions, you need to be able to provide the same kind of services to them. Because otherwise, what are we even doing in the world of tech? I guess this is for Techno India Group. This is where I come in as an innovator, as somebody who is constantly trying to disrupt uh, the way that we use our own technologies. Uh, this is why the first few months of the COVID-19 lockdown, uh, we barely slept, right? My, my teams and I, we were constantly figuring out ways to bring our classrooms online. Uh, and not, it's not just about bringing classrooms online, right? Because a lot of the learning happens outside of the classroom as well. So how do you take all of that campus life and encapsulate it within a space which is which might be restricted to just a, the Zoom platform on your phones? Or how do you integrate your LMSs uh, with the video conferencing platforms? Uh, and, you know, while trying to, uh, and also at the same time working with certain premonitions uh, in the minds of our faculty and staff, uh, in, uh, you know, not the same kind of access to technology that I just explained before to all of our uh, almost 100,000 students that are in our group. And I guess out of this was born the idea of, uh, of a platform that we now called Offbeat Education, uh, which, was, um, which was targeted towards bringing uh, the learning management systems, the management information systems, uh, the customer relationship management systems, inventory management, and video conferencing, uh, where, this, where the institutions themselves populate the data and the, and the study materials, and then the system itself uh, works around it, uses uh, AI proctoring for examinations and in totality creates this one platform which any school uh, or any institution can end up using. And it's been a fantastic time I think, for innovation, for disruption uh, in the space because COVID-19 turned out to be the chief technical officer that we never knew we needed. A lot of the digital transformation that we've been talking about for the last uh, five, six, seven years uh, basically came to fruition almost uh, uh, in in the matter of a few weeks. And what ended up happening, I mean, not like we were all prepared, and I don't think anybody was really prepared for what was coming, but we made do because at the end of the day, as human beings, that's what we are, right? We are resilient, we are malleable, we're flexible, and we figured out ways of doing things better tomorrow or today even than we did yesterday. I think the COVID-19 just accelerated the whole process, even in terms of entrepreneurship, which is a field that is very, very close to my heart. I think we saw uh, the country of India going from a country which produces no PPE kits and masks to the highest um, grossing producer of PPE kits in the world. So, you know, we, we, are, we live in a world of contrast at the end of the day. We live in a world of dichotomies and, uh, and we live in a world, especially in a country like India, which is filled with so many interesting entrepreneurs, which are filled with so many frugal entrepreneurs who know, who've made it their life's goal to make do with what they have at hand uh, instead of cribbing about the fact that they do not have all the resources in the world to work with. So I think, uh, and I'm, I don't think, I think I'm actually hopeful and I'm optimistic about the days to come because I know that uh, technology is there to help us uh, move through this time in life. Uh, but again, it's not just technology, it's also human resilience. I am a huge believer in the power of humanity in general, in the power of collaboration as well. And I know that tomorrow's youth will know how to use technology better than you and I will. And uh, tomorrow's youth will also be able to uh, will be able to fathom that at the end of the day, technology is only an enabler. Uh, what we want to contribute to the world at the end of the day comes back to us uh, about how resilient we are and about how well we can utilize this this beautiful thing that we have uh, available to us that is technology and make the world a better place. This is Meghdoot signing off from Calcutta, India and looking forward to working with many more young people and helping them uh, get access to better technologies, get access to better platforms and ecosystems for entrepreneurship and innovation and in, in effect helping uh, the world in, at large getting better and more resilient uh, as long as we are together. Thank you very much and have a lovely day.